It's fast becoming known as the pandemic of the unvaccinated. The coronavirus Delta variant is leading the third wave of infections. But as cases reach Nigerian shores, especially here in Lagos, reactions to the jab among residents are mixed. I've had the vaccine and, you know, I've had the double dose of Pfizer. And, uh, you know, you have to protect yourself and the people around you. With the vaccine, I'm unsure of how that goes. I'm not very comfortable with it. I haven't gotten it and I'm not sure I'm going to get it except there are measures um, that forces everyone to get it. I've had a vaccine, I've had it two shots. I had it because I believe it is appropriate. I would love to, but I don't know where to take it. I have it, I have my own, yes. I've taken twice and I have my own card also. I'm not taking the vaccine. Why haven't you taken the vaccine? Well, I feel I'm not, I'm not being um, effect, affected, so that's why. If you're being tested about it and you're free about it, that, there's no need for the vaccine. Wanting a COVID-19 vaccine in Nigeria isn't enough to get it. After a five-month rollout, 98% of the 4 million Oxford AstraZeneca doses donated by COVAX have been used, vaccinating just 2% of Nigeria's 112 million eligible population. 4 million more doses of vaccines, this time from Moderna, have arrived in Nigeria. Rollout will begin on August 10th. And for those who have already taken one dose of the Oxford AstraZeneca ZAB, a further 700,000 doses are expected to arrive in Nigeria this week, with another 3.9 million doses expected by the middle of August. COVID-19 testing and travel have gone hand in hand for more than a year. All travellers to Nigeria must isolate on the first seven days of arrival. On the seventh day, a prepaid PCR test is needed before quarantine formally ends. But recent reports show more than 10,000 travellers have failed to show up for their tests. Lagos has been the epicentre of the pandemic in Nigeria. In no other part of the country have more people tested positive for, recovered from, have been vaccinated against or died from COVID-19. Yet many Lagosians are still unaware or unbothered about the risks. I'm tired of walking around with this thing on. Um, again, I think, I think it's real, but the figures and everything is just over, you know, it's exaggerated. I'm tired of hearing it. I want this country to move forward. <laughs> Everyone is sick and tired of hearing about Kofi. So we just hope and pray that God should just take it away. COVID fatigue is the consensus amongst these Nigerians. The many people may be tired of the virus, with the Delta variation infections growing in a country where some 200 million citizens are unvaccinated, it's clear the virus isn't tired of them. Adefemi Akinsanya, Arise News, Lagos. To provide more clarity on the Moderna batch donated by the US, the United States, through the COVAX facility and reasons for the postponement of the rollout. We're now being joined by Professor Mujisola Adeyeye, Director General of the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC. Good morning, Professor Adeyeye, and welcome to The Morning Show. Thank you for joining us, Prof. Good morning. It's nice to be here. Thank you very much Good for morning. inviting me. Well, I mean, uh, one major concern is, uh, you know, the fact that uh, last week we were told that NAVDAC had approved the uh, Moderna vaccines. And then we had a report from the Presidential Steering Committee that the uh, administration of the vaccines will commence today. But now it's been postponed till uh, uh, next week. Uh, Prof, uh, what information do you have on the reasons for this? Because on one hand, the spokesperson of the PSC uh, just said, well, you know, for uh, certain reasons, the Minister of Information said, oh, for administrative reasons, uh, what exactly is going on? Nigerians would like to know because you have to shorten uh, the uh, testing and verification period so that, you know, uh, the deadline will be met. What happened? Thank you so much for having me. Just to let everybody know that the Moderna vaccine is safe to use. However, to answer your question, uh, on July 15, we approved Moderna vaccine. 
uh, amongst other, you know, three uh, vaccines. We approved Moderna, we approved the AstraZeneca Korea, and we approved Sputnik. But that is approval of the vaccine based on the dossier that NAVDAC was sent or that NAVDAC got from the WHO database. Now, when the vaccine comes in, NAVDAC will need to test the vaccine in, the, in our lab to ensure that whatever we got from the dossier is the same as what we are seeing with our eyes. And we did that for AstraZeneca uh, from India. We did the testing and we released uh, the vaccine for use. And we were going to also do that for the Moderna. Uh, and we were actually doing it. However, we found out that the labeling uh, on the Moderna is not full enough for us to do track and trace. NAVDAC is the only country, only regulatory agency that uses what is called GS1 driven traceability to monitor where each vaccine via goes so that there will not be for standard falsified medicines infiltrating the supply chain so that the vaccine buyers can be accounted for. So when we found that out, we didn't have that problem with the labeling. This is labeling issue, please. Has nothing to do with the quality because we want to be sure that uh, we can monitor the vaccine as it leaves Abuja to the nearest local government. So what we then needed to do was to uh, put an extra label, which is the, which is again, is the, NAVDAC is the only agency that is doing this in the, where in Africa, but very likely in the world for COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, so we had to then, start working on the what is called serialization, uh, labeling. It is through the barcoding that you know where vaccine is or where it is going. And we did that successfully. So we are doing that right now. And by the end of the week, we'll finish uh, the, the package. Has nothing to do with the quality. The Moderna vaccine is EUL, is WHO EUL approved and approved by FDA, is a stringent regulatory authority, 100% confidence in Moderna vaccine and is safe uh, to use. Okay, Professor Mojisala Adeye, is it unusual to have missing labels on these vaccines that come to the country? I'm asking because we've gone through a first rollout of the AstraZeneca by the Serum Institute of India. Did they also have the problems of missing labels? It's not a missing label. It is a technology-driven labeling. It is not missing at all. We could have done what is called batch-to-batch -batch, uh, track and trace, but if we, are do we have seven batches. If we are doing batch-to-batch, -batch, we're going to get the same results, which means it is only one batch that we can actually trace effectively. But... What is called serialization is you now gather all the batches together and then you make you on the vaccine uh, where it goes rather uh, throughout the country. There is nothing missing at all. India is one of the countries that is more advanced in this serialization labeling. So it from Moderna also comes with the barcoding, but it's not full enough for us to be able to track it throughout uh, the country. No missing label. It is just technology that NAVDAC is leading uh, in Africa and indeed in the world. Does this affect the entire 4 million and 80 doses? Uh, when you say batches, how many of these vaccines were actually affected? No, no, no. It's uh, the entire. It's back. It's the boxes that has the label. It's, it's, it's not the vaccine. Please let us understand that it has nothing to do with what is inside. It is what is called the secondary packaging labeling. 
and we have about 28,000 boxes that we're going to add extra labor to so that we can do uh, nationwide uh, monitoring uh, just to be sure that you know the, all the vaccines are counted, are counted for. So it has nothing to do with uh, mislabeling. The labeling was fine. It is just that the technology for the COVID shield was much advanced. It's, it's an advanced technology compared to what was coming from the US. Okay, so it's sort of like you had to like decode it in such a way that we could track it here. But I want to talk about other vaccines we've exactly. received. Uh, I want to talk about other vaccines we've received. Uh, there's a story in the news. Please confirm for us: Have we received, or has Navdak received any Chinese variant vaccine or that was uh, donated from China? Any vaccine donated from China? What's the nature of the vaccine? Have you done efficacy testing on that vaccine? And uh, I'd also like to know, like, because you said you approved AstraZeneca Korea, is there a possibility soon that we may be getting AstraZeneca from Korea in, because the last batch was on the Seren Institute uh, in India? Okay, yes. Uh, if I get your, there was a little bit of break. Uh, you were talking about uh, the China vaccine. Uh, yes, we got uh, the China vaccine dossier. Uh, from WHO, uh, uh, what do you call it, password access link. Uh, we got that about a month plus ago, and we have been reviewing that uh, vaccine. It's called Sinopharm uh, vaccine. Uh, we have been reviewing it, and uh, we will give our you know, decision, we will make our decision very, very soon about Sinopharm. Uh, it is made in China. Uh, but uh, in terms of the efficacy uh, for Sinopharm, it's about 75, 73, 74% efficacious, uh, just like uh, AstraZeneca. Uh, but uh, again, we are looking at each vaccine based on its own merit, uh, because it's, it's not just the efficacy, we also look at other parameters. Uh, so to answer your question, yes, we are, we've gotten the dossier for the Sinopharm from uh, China. The AstraZeneca Korea, we're going to be, we are hoping we go, we, uh, yes, we are going to get that uh, actually because we have approved it. Approval is something, is, 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 uh, approval is different from actually getting the vaccine and looking at the shipping document and testing in our labs. Uh, but uh, whenever, whichever vaccine comes in, whether it's AstraZeneca, Korea, whether it is uh, Pfizer, BioNTech, NAVDAC does at least 15 working days looking at what was sent to us to approve. And then when it comes, we take it to our lab uh, for testing to ensure that what we got in the dossier is what we are getting uh, upon arrival of the vaccine. Well, Prof, thank you for two major clarifications you've been able to make uh, this morning. First, that there is nothing wrong with the Moderna vaccine uh, uh, in terms of quality, in terms of efficacy. Uh, what is going on is our own local responsibility to be able to trace and track the vaccines inside Nigeria. So it's a Nigerian administrative thing. That much is clear to me. And then for the first time, we now know what we got uh, from China. Uh, because when the uh, Presidential Steering Committee was briefing the public, they did not disclose the uh, uh, specific vaccine that we got from uh, China. Now you have said it's a Sinopharm uh, vaccine. So, but I would like to ask you two quick things. One, why is it that uh, you move very fast? We have not got it. That's it. Just okay. a minute, sir. We have not gotten the Sinopharm vaccine. We have gotten the dossier. We are reviewing the dossier. If we approve it, then they can send uh, the Sinopharm vaccine to us, and then we will test and release if it passes our test. Thank you. But I just wanted to clarify. That's Thank important you. because I was going to ask why is the Moderna moving faster than the Sinopharm, uh, whereas we got information about the Sinopharm before uh, Moderna. But look, there have been initiatives inside Nigeria, particularly in terms of alternative medicine, uh, harbor drugs and all of that that have been proposed. 
And there are Nigerians that have also uh, approached NAVDAC to say, look, test this, test that. Is it that uh, we're not up to it? Because earlier this morning, I mentioned uh, Coviran, Iran managed to develop something. Uh, in some other parts of the world, they managed to develop something. Uh, why is it so difficult for Nigeria uh, to approve something of its own uh, creation? What has been the experience of NAVDAC in this regard? Herbal medicine is my own soft spot. It is my soft spot because I was raised up on herbal medicine. Uh, the other commercial, uh, conventional medicine that I knew growing up was APC. Otherwise, we were, on, we were using herbal medicine and they work. However, it is the one that work that we know. The ones that kill people, we may not know. We may say, oh, that child is a biku. We don't know whether it was the herbal medicine overdose that killed that child. Uh, but at least many of us survived uh, from herbal medicine. So I take herbal medicine uh, development personally. March of 2019, NAVDAC started the herbal medicine product committee because we want a renaissance in herbal medicine development in Nigeria. God has given us wonderful biodiversity surrounding us. We wake up with it, we eat it, we drink, we drink it, you know, are just wonderful. So we wanted to advance uh, the development of herbal medicine. So we started the herbal medicine product committee and uh, we are still working on that committee. We actually met uh, yesterday, uh, our fifth meeting. Uh, and the goal is to bring the herbalist and the researcher together because Many things that our forefathers knew about herbal medicine, a lot of them died with them. It's unfortunate. Uh, so we are bringing herbalist uh, practitioners uh, together with researchers to collaborate. And we have a platform now where researchers and herbalists collaborate. The herbalists bring the plants and tell the researcher what he does, what he doesn't do, and the researcher takes that into the lab. However, to develop herbal medicinal products is more complicated. Uh, first of all, it has to go through what is called the listing process. Listing process. Uh, the practitioner or the client submits what they know about the herbal medicine to us in NAVDAC. And it is on our website what and what and what should be submitted. We have revised uh, the things that should be submitted. And once it is submitted, we look at them, at the data or the information. And then if it is okay, we go to uh, the site to inspect the site because there should be uh, hygienic condition. If not, somebody will take that and start having stomach problem or whatever. So we inspect, after we inspect, we take sample to the lab and we do safety test, microbial limit test, toxicity test on the product. That is the listing stage. If it passes, we put a NAVDAC number with L at the end of it. Nigeria is the only country that has this regulatory process in Africa. Even FDA doesn't. At our meeting yesterday, that was even underscored and repeated that FDA is even looking at the way we do our listing process but that is the first step, safe to use. However, what is safe to use? How efficacious or how effective it is? We don't know until we do clinical trial. And to do clinical trial, it has to be well-designed clinical trial. It's not just, oh, I gave it to 10 people in my village. All of them turned out very well. Yes, that is uh, okay but you have to do it in such a way that it will be believable across the world, or it will be believable among uh, scientists, whether it is Africa or Nigeria or whatever. So that, that clinical uh, stage of it is part of what slows research down in Nigeria. And again, because of this COVID pandemic, CBN started an initiative Health Sector Research and Development Intervention Scheme, 
where people are invited to submit proposals. And emphasis was given to herbal medicines, vaccine development, uh, to have local content. That process is going on now. Uh, but to answer your question, since the pandemic, we've approved about 42, 45 uh, herbal medicines for listing, for temporary approval. So you cannot say it cures COVID. It can say it relieves symptoms. It relieves symptoms of this or that. Because until we do the clinical trial, we cannot say it cures anything because it, it has to come with high level of statistical confidence before you can say it kills. But we know that it may cure, but it has to be documented. So we, once we are doing the labeling, we are looking at the labeling uh, at the listing stage, we make sure that the right wording is used so that it doesn't uh, connote something different uh, to people. So that is uh, where we are now. And then there are, I believe two or two or three that are going through clinical uh, trials right now, different stages of, of uh, clinical trials. It is after that that we can claim that, oh, it can cure this, it can cure that. Uh, but it costs, it, it, it costs a lot of money. That is why CBN is helping uh, to put some money into this uh, intervention scheme for those who are successful. Uh, during the grant review process so that they can take uh, that uh, herbal medicine to the next step, which is the clinical trial stage. Thank you. For that, Professor. Uh, I have two quick questions. One is on the Moderna vaccine that we are reviewing, uh, because reports from other parts of the world suggest that with the Delta variant, uh, immunity is likely to wane uh, when it comes to vaccines. And uh, the Moderna being one of the mRNA vaccines we have in the world, uh, the manufacturers have also said they are pushing for booster shots for their vaccines. Is that something NAVDAC is considering at the moment? Are we likely to have NAVDAC approve booster shots when it comes to the Moderna vaccine for Nigeria? Secondly, talking about vaccine manufacturing, there are plans by um, Asian and African countries to begin manufacturing their vaccines uh, to increase supply. Are there any plans in the works for Nigerian candidates? Do we have anything at all uh, in the pipeline? Thank you very much. Uh, in terms of booster shots, uh, everything is driven by science, okay? Uh, if the immunological profile shows that uh, having a booster shot after a year or after a year and a half, uh, we continue that immunological, you know, to make it a, a level immunological profile, meaning it is, it is uh, maintained or consistent, we would, we would do that, of course, because we have to follow the science also, meaning that if it is Pfizer or Moderna, yes, if they know that, if they report that there's going to, there's a need for booster shot, definitely we will get a, we will get a booster shots or we will approve rather uh, booster shots for any vaccine, uh, whether it's Moderna, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, but we are dependent on science. We follow the science. Uh, in terms of the local manufacturing, uh, that is my own passion because we've got to increase our local productivity. Without drug security, there cannot be health security. COVID-19 pandemic has shown us uh, that uh, less than 2% of our population uh, are vaccinated right, right now. That is health insecurity. So in terms of local manufacturing, the government is working assiduously uh, to ensure that there will be local manufacturing within a year uh, or starting of local manufacturing within a year or so. Uh, the government has a, a public-private partnership with a local company uh, and the government has 49% uh, share on, uh, with this local company. Uh, so government is putting a lot of support for the company uh, to start uh, manufacturing of COVID-19 vaccines and routine uh, vaccine. So it is going to happen. 
It is going to happen also because without a strong regulatory agency, without a strong NAVDAC, WHO will not certify any manufacturing facility. So as we speak, NAVDAC is moving closer, closer, very, very close to getting the maturity level that is needed for Nigeria to be able to manufacture our own vaccine. And the government is supporting us on this. The government is funding NAVDAC to redo the vaccine laboratory testing. This is testing now. It has nothing to do with the manufacturing company. It is that once that product is finished, how do we test like we are testing other products from, from outside the country now to, to enhance our capacity and uh, with equipment and manpower. So we are getting ready for local manufacturing of vaccines. Take one more question, but we have less than a minute to go. So your response has to be very brief. Okay, uh, well, uh, Prof, uh, th thank you so much. Uh, real quickly, I want you to confirm to me because about the state of this Chinese vaccine, because there's a story in the paper that says on the 23rd of July that the Chinese government on Friday donated 70,000 doses to Nigeria. The Chinese ambassador to Nigeria made a donation to the Nigerian Minister of Health, Dr. Sage Hanire in Abuja. So a donation has been made, but you're saying it's a dossier you got. Balance it out for me, Prof. It's a promise. It is not that the vaccine has arrived. Once we approve the Sinopharm, which is the one that the government is expecting donation for, then when it gets in, we will test this like any other uh, vaccine that we have gotten. And if, if it passes, it's available for uh, people to get it. But uh, right now, we don't have the vaccine itself uh, in the country. We are about to finish the review of the dose right now. Well, thank, thank you. you very much, uh, Professor Mujisola Adeyeye, for joining us on The Morning Show and for all the clarifications you've been able to make and the information you've been able to give us. Thank you very much. Indeed.